It is now time to turn your attention to the organic model, the dinosaur head. The workflow starts similarly, meaning you work at an edge level to create the appropriate seams. From then on, use tools like Peel and Relax to unwrap the model. Given the curvy nature of an organic model, you need tools like Peel and Relax to flatten the mesh properly. Continue working on your scene. If you need to, open the file uvunwrappingdinohead.max to pick up where the last movie ended. Select the dino head and isolate it. If you need to, use F4 to see the structure of the mesh. When dealing with an organic model, there are a few things that are similar to what you have done before, and some that are different. Because a bitmap is not readily available, you need to use something that will give you feedback as to whether you are getting distortion or not. Generally, you use a checkered pattern to that effect. The Unwrap UV modifier does have a built-in checkered pattern, but you get better control using a material design to that effect. Open the Slate Material Editor and locate the material name Dino Head. Assign a checker map to its diffuse channel. If you want, you can change the colors to suit your personal preference. Apply an Unwrap UVW modifier to see the checkered effect in the viewport. You may need to increase the checkered tiling to 10 by 10 or even 20 by 20 to see it better. Dismiss the material editor or move it aside. Some areas look decent, others streak badly. A word on topology. It usually helps to have an evenly distributed mesh to minimize distortion. It is the case here even though the edge loops could be improved quite a bit. Avoid having areas that are too dense with vertices and others with very large polygons. Also, Sharp angle changes tend to create distortion in the mapping. As you've learned before, it is best to break the model in pieces when unwrapping it. Trying to unwrap the dino head in one piece would be close to impossible and would certainly not yield good results. So, you need to create peel seams to separate the neck, ears, horn, cranium, and lower jaw. Disable map seams so you can see better where you place your own peel seams. In Edge Sub-Object Mode, select edges to separate the neck from the rest of the head. Use point-to-point -point edge selection to go around. Zoom in when needed. When you're done, convert the edge selection to a peel seam as you have learned before. You have now separated the neck as a cylindrical piece. You still need to cut it at the bottom to create another seam so that you can flatten the neck. This takes care of the neck portion. Next, go around the ears. Work them one at a time. Don't go too fast or too far too soon. Zoom in occasionally and orbit around to ensure you have the right edge selection. If you make a mistake, exit point-to-point -point mode temporarily and use Alt to deselect wrong edges. Continue selecting edges and convert to a peel seam when done. This separates the ear from the head, but you still need additional cuts to unfold it properly. Make a selection along the ridge but make sure one of the edges is not selected. This deselected edge will serve as an anchor later when unwrapping the ear. Convert the selection to a peel seam and repeat the procedure on the other ear.
Once the ears are done, separate the horn. This should be easy enough by placing a seam around the base and another along the height. Depending on your zoom factor, a seam or selected edge might be difficult to see. Zoom out or orbit around as needed. Finally, you need to separate the cranium from the lower jaw. Find an edge loop that works for you and turn it into a seam. Repeat the procedure on the other side. You actually need a couple more cuts, but those become more apparent once you start unwrapping the model. Which is what you do in the next movie.